Good morning, folks. We'll begin with plasma filaments arching up over the northeastern limb. These are vertically oriented and therefore qualify as solar tornadoes. The primary eruption threat on our star has been the plasma filament, the thin dark rope a million kilometers long above and behind the Earth's scale there. As the equatorial portion begins departing the disk, the southern tail released. This occurred last night, and while technically in an Earth-facing position, the eruption was tiny and a bit south of our orbital plane. Not much in the way of solar flaring. One C flare in the last day. The sunspots are in major decay following the M-class blast a few days ago, negative umbras arguing their way across the disk. Three days of solar wind telemetry show a steady and relatively calm stream. Earth's magnetic shield is solid for another day. You will remember a minor seismic index factor in the heliocentric four-way lineup of Mercury, Mars, Sun, and Uranus in the mix there as well. This complements the primary earthquake factor, Earth-facing coronal holes. Current opening is red negative, with a positive hole coming in on the north. 211 angstroms reveals that the alphan waves and interplanetary magnetic fields of that negative opening were directly aligned with our planet yesterday. And boom goes the dynamite. A strong earthquake struck near the border of Chile and Argentina. This eruption rang more than a dozen stations, with readings peaking out near 6.9. The USGS has settled on 6.7, which is a fair mark given the spread of the readings. We also saw increased seismicity down near Antarctica, had some more up near the Arctic Circle, and we can't forget that volcanoes are part of these watch periods as well. The Fuego volcano in Guatemala is now joined by one in Costa Rica and one in Mexico. The Earth absolutely rocked yesterday. But speaking of things that rock, yes, we're still six months away from enhanced solar wind monitoring, and yes, the Earth cams aren't available yet either. But folks, Discover is one of two satellites, along with the GOES-R, coming next year that will revolutionize how we watch space weather and monitor for solar storms. The launch was yesterday aboard a SpaceX vehicle. They also beautifully caught the detachment of the booster and secondary firing. Great article on star system formation coming here out of UMass. I recommend it for those deep in that line of study. Here's a before and after in Louisiana from 17 days after I was born until just a few weeks ago. Mud accumulation expanding the land mass at the Gulf. We also had our second Liberty Brothers interview, held nothing back there and continued the terrific discussion. This is linked for you below. High pressure node in the north central states still driving cold air down through the eastern part of the country while the Pacific moisture keeps coming onshore and mixing up to be dropped as even more snow. Folks, it's official. Boston's 40-day snow record was just shattered in only 17 days. Hugely important for our climate discourse. In Europe, we see a northern low driving at the Norwegian coastline with a convergence due south and well inland. That's where the clouds are sticking, mostly, to the north. Spain and Portugal are seeing some minor moisture off the Atlantic as well. Down under, we've got a convergence between nations reaching back up onto the land and a low to the north pulling tropical moisture towards Queensland. So although the watch zones are connected at the coast tonight, they come from opposite sides of the country. You've got your current conditions followed by shots of our star to close at 6.25 a.m. in the east, 4.25 a.m. mountain time. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.